Welcome back to another episode of Open RCT2 Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the absolute easiest way to build one of these fireball or ring of fire rides built by Larson International. Sometimes they're known as the Super Loop or the Giga Loop. Now I'm going to show you two different ways to build this ride without using any shoestring hacks. So let's get started. So first of all, we need to use the vertical drop coaster. So I'm going to build that here. We're going to make the station two tiles long, and then we're going to want to go immediately to the steep section of track. And then we're going to go to vertical. Now it's not going to let me choose the quarter loop right now. So we need to turn on the cheats. So we need to have enable all drawable track pieces, show all operating modes, allow arbitrary ride type changes, show vehicles from other track types and disable vehicle limits. With those turned on, we now can access the quarter loop. So I'm going to do two of those and then we're gonna go back to the steep to flat piece and we are all finished. Build the entrance and exit and I'll quickly make those invisible. Now for the trains, I'm going to change it to the looping roller coaster trains. And then I want it to be one train with six cars per train, although you could change it if you wanted to, but I'm gonna go with six. Now for the operating mode, we are going to leave it at continuous circuit mode. It won't let us update the number of circuits since it's a vertical drop coaster, but if we change it to the twister coaster, it's going to allow us to change the number of circuits. I'm gonna go with 13, but you can play around with this for whatever you'd like. Now all we need to do is open the ride. Now for some reason, the game mechanics will push the train all the way out of the station and then it's going to fall backwards since we have multiple circuits turned on. But for some reason, the game mechanics seem to give the train more speed at every pass, which doesn't seem possible. But eventually, the train will gain enough speed to make a full revolution. So depending on how many circuits you set the ride to, it will eventually go upside down as many times as you'd like. Now here the train is gaining some speed and it will eventually go all the way around, but it gives riders some nice hang time. Also, for some reason, when it makes the full revolution, it's going backwards, but that's okay. And I think it's making three full revolutions and then it comes to a stop. Obviously you could increase this with the number of circuits and that's all there is to it. This is a really simple ride. It actually gives us some pretty good stats and then you can save the track design and build it in any of your parks. I'm gonna do that really quick, but now I'm gonna show you how you can then upgrade this ride using the Edit Ride Vehicles plugin. So if you don't have this, the link is in the video description, but we can use this picker and select the vehicle. So now we have the correct ride. Now looking at vehicle one right here, we can see that the track progress is at 18 units. Now we wanna move that back to where vehicle two is and vice versa. So looking at vehicle two here, it's at track progress 24. So vehicle one and two will switch places. So moving vehicle two forward to that 18 unit position. And then we can go to vehicle one and move that back to the 24 unit position. And then now I'm going to change the variant of vehicle one to look like vehicle two. And then vehicle two, we're gonna change it to the front car variant, which is zero. Now looking back at vehicle six, I'm going to change the variant to zero, which is the front car. And then we're gonna hit reverse. And now we have that rear car. Now for vehicle five, whoops, don't wanna do that. I actually wanna reverse it. And then we'll do the same thing for vehicle four. We will reverse it. And then going back to vehicle six, I just need to move it forward a little bit or backwards actually, because the car length was a little bit longer, so now the spacing looks correct. So now we can open the ride. Now this first cycle, it's not going to uh, update accordingly with how we switched the vehicle one and two, but I'm going to speed it up and we can see how it looks when it comes to the station. So now the train looks more symmetrical as it sits in the station. The front and rear cars are the same and the seats are reversed to give it a more realistic look. Now for this next method, I'm actually going to build the track I have just saved. So under Twister Coaster, it is titled Ring of Fire. Now if you'd like to download the track yourself, the link is in the video description below. But beware, when you do build this saved track, it automatically reduces the number of circuits to 5, so you'll have to update those accordingly. 
But for this new method, I'm actually going to change the trains to the air-powered vertical coaster trains and set it to nine cars per train. And then for the operating mode, I'm using powered launch passing station. We're gonna set it at 40 miles per hour and about eight circuits. Now, when we test the ride, you will see that it easily makes a full revolution, but it won't always do that. So when guests are on the ride and it changes the mass, it usually doesn't make the revolution for the first one or two circuits. And then sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. The weight really plays a factor. So basically in this powered launch mode, you can save the track design just like the other one if you'd like. It's really that easy to build this ride, but I do wanna show you some optional tricks that you can do to upgrade the visuals of the ride, like we did on the other one with changing the vehicles. But also it is kind of odd having that flat bottom instead of a perfect circle. So I will show you how we can edit that to make it look a little bit nicer. So basically, if we delete this piece of track here, I can go back here and then create the perfect circle. You just need to make sure you have disabled clearance checks turned on and you can build the track there and the track should merge together at the end right here. And then we need to do the same thing on the other side of the station, build that flat to steep transition. It's not gonna let us build it under the twister coaster, so we need to change the ride type to vertical coaster, and it gives us that flat to steep, it merges in. We change it back to twister coaster and we can test the ride. The only problem is the train is going to follow the perfect circle and never return to the station. So we need to go to the tile inspector and find this piece right here. On that tile, we can see that this is the bottom track piece, but the train will follow the lowest track piece, which we want to be that flat to steep transition, so move it to the bottom position. And then we can do the same thing on the other side. So we want to find that flat to steep and move it below the other piece of track. And so now the train is following the correct path. And we can then make this piece invisible. And then we can do the same thing for the station pieces, make those invisible. So it's just going to look a lot nicer, even though the train is still following the original track. This is just a nice workaround to make it look prettier. Now I'm going to respawn the vehicles since the train got a little messed up with the tile inspector confusion. And then reopening the edit ride vehicles plugin, I can select our train. I want to switch vehicle one with vehicle four, just like we did in the last example. So vehicle four is at track progress 24. Vehicle one is at track progress 25. So we want to move vehicle one back to the 25. And then vehicle four, I think I messed it up. So vehicle one is at the 24 position and vehicle four is going forward to track progress 25 in the front. And then I need to change the variant to variant one for vehicle four, and then go to vehicle one, and that is going to change to variant zero. Now I want vehicle one to be reversed, and then I'm gonna do that for vehicle two, reverse, and then vehicle three, reverse the car. And then vehicle four is the front car, so we're gonna leave that. So going to vehicle five, I'm also gonna reverse that and then vehicle six, seven, eight, and nine are the same. And then for vehicle 10, we will reverse it and change the variant to one, so we have a rear car. So now we have a symmetrical train with the riders facing each other. And if we test it, I'm going to speed it up, but once the full ride cycle is over, the train will return to the station. And since vehicle one got moved backwards, it will end up stopping in the correct spot, so it looks nice and symmetrical. And there you go, a nice visual upgrade. Now it's really up to you to choose which method you'd like to build the ride, either the continuous circuit mode or the powered launch mode. Both give really nice stats and they're really easy to build. And then there's always the optional tricks I showed you of using the edit ride vehicles plugin so that the train will stop in the center of the station and then making the train symmetrical with seats facing forwards and backwards. And then there's always the visual option of creating that dummy track to create the perfect circle and then having the actual track invisible. I know it's not a perfect solution, but this is the best we can do without using any shoestring hacks. And I think it works out really well, and it's really nice to be able to save the track designs and just plop them down in any park or use them in scenario play. So have fun building your own Ring of Fire ride. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I know some of these tricks are difficult if you're new to hacking rides. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe. 
because next time I'm going to show you how to build this variation of the flying scooters ride. So stay tuned for more.